This is Twit. This episode of Hands On Photography is brought to you by Masterclass. For a limited time, when you buy one annual Masterclass All Access Pass for yourself, you get another one to gift for free at masterclass.com slash hop. Hey folks, I'm Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands-On Photography here on twit.tv. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always, and trust me when I say that, it's been a fascinating day, if you will, here around the studio as we try to set up all of this technical stuff. You see all of these wires and stuff hanging around. Yeah, we're working it out, though. I'm glad y'all are here. I appreciate y'all hopping in each and every week to check out the show on the network. We get together about 2 p.m.-ish. <laughs> Pacific time. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face, but it's all good. We're going to just keep pushing through here and then getting this job done and giving you some awesome content from the wonderful world of photography. All right. So before we get started, uh, I, again, I just want to say thank you for your support. And if you have a second right now, open up your favorite podcatcher of choice and be sure to hit the subscribe option and then go back and check out all the other episodes and share those episodes out with your, your friends and family that just may be interested in learning a thing or two about photography. OK, now let's go ahead and get the show started with a little bit of feedback from you all. I've been asking for pictures to be sent to us via hop at twit.tv. And boy, have you all been sending them. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm still trying to play catch up on it. And it's been a lot of fun going through the images and seeing what's going on. So if you're still interested in sharing your images with me um, and perfectly fine with me taking a look at them and pulling them up on air and even offering a little bit of criticism, shoot them on over to hop at twit.tv and uh, be sure to include your story with it and let me know your social media handle and if I have your consent, so on and so forth. Because I'm not going to just throw anybody's images up without consent. That's not cool. OK. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at my computer. Here's the email. This came from Mr. Harry Elver. Um, I appreciate his support stating that he enjoys our show and he took a shot with his Pixel 2 XL shot at f1.8. That is a fixed aperture. So that's a lot of light coming in and it has a super fast shutter speed of one. I can't even say that fraction. It's huge mungus. Uh, <laughs> but apparently he was outside on the beach and they were out watching um, the sea turtles. And this is the image. I'm going to pull it up here in Lightroom. So first and foremost, Harry, thank you for sending this shot over to me and be sure you give him a follow over on Instagram at Harry Elver, as you see right there on the top of my screen. Now, my thoughts on this shot, Mr. Elver, um, I like the composition to an extent. My only problem I wish we didn't have this cropped out. So next time when you're framing it up, Try to include her sitting down and you don't want to cut her off. A lot of times people will struggle with where do they make the crop when they have people in the scene. You don't want to cut off hands at the at the wrist. You don't want to cut off feet at the ankle. A good rule of thumb is to try to work from the waist up. Something like this would have been a little bit better. But if it were me, I would have totally shot it to where we could see her full, um, her full figure here in the frame. I do like the fact that you have the uh, the sea turtle in the background because my eyes went from your subject subject here, the model, and then I trailed on up the frame and saw, oh, what is this back here in the background? Beautiful scene. Now, from a processing standpoint, I think it's a little bit flat. So we're going to try to give it just a touch of saturation. And what saturation does is give you just a little more color like that. See, when I did that, you notice her skin came, came to life a little bit more. OK, and then maybe give it a little more clarity and texture for sharpness just a little bit because the pixel did a really good job. So it doesn't need that much. Then finally, we'll scroll down here and put a little bit of a vignette on it to really, really make us focus in 
like that. There. I think that looks a little bit better from a, a post-processing standpoint. But again, composition-wise, I would have started just making sure you get everything framed up before hitting that shutter. Um, Again, just think back to episode seven, I believe, seven, six is a week or two ago where we talked about it. A lot of times you, you get in a rush with your camera. You don't have to get in a rush. Uh, just just line everything up, take your time and notice what's going on in the scene around your subject and use those items to your advantage, whether it's a lamp post, whether it's a shrub, a tree or something like that. Use those items to your advantage. And then I know we have these these fancy smartphones that allows us to do zooms and stuff like that. I don't recommend doing that. Use your feet as your zoom. If you need to get closer, step closer. If you need to back up, back up. Don't do all of the zooming and stuff that's all computerized on your smartphones. It's, it's convenient, but I don't necessarily think it is a good help for uh, getting the best out of your image. But yeah, Mr. Elver, Thank you, thank you, thank you for sending that on over to us. I got a bunch more images, but I'm going to try to push through here because we ran a little bit late today and we're going to <laughs> just keep rolling, just keep rolling along. So thank you, Harry. Go ahead and give him a follow over on Instagram. All right. So now today's subject, you notice I have this little thingamajig here on, this, on the desk with me. This is what you call a ring light. My man, my homie, Mr. Victor, brought this ring light in, and I wanted to talk about lighting in general when it comes to your photography. Previously on the episode of Hands On Tech, I talked about having a, an additional light source as being one of your must-have items when you're getting started in photography, because I don't care how fancy smancy your camera is, if it doesn't have enough light, it's not going to give you a good image, period. So try to have an additional light source handy, whether it's a flash, whether it's a ring light or a speed light or what have you. This right here is a ring light. And what it'll do, it, it will produce just a soft glow if you turn it on and face it towards your subject just because of the way it's shaped and also because of this coating that it has on it. You don't want your light to be really, really harsh and, and hard on your subject. A lot of times you hear people say you don't want to shoot during high noon uh, outside because the sun is so bright. And that's true. It's the, the sunlight is giving you a lot more light, but it's super duper harsh. You want to have that that light to be uh, diffused, if you will. So go out when it's a little bit later in the day or earlier in the morning, or go out when it's just a little bit hazy outside because the clouds will act as a diffusing source on the light and soften it up for you. For example, I'm gonna just grab my smartphone here and just show you a difference in hard light versus uh, the diffused light. So I'm gonna turn my flashlight on on my phone. There is no diffuser on here. And as I put this up to my face, you see how harsh that it is right here on my eye. Now, take this here piece of plastic, which is actually a diffuser for, for a regular uh, speed light to put on your camera. And it softens it up just a touch. And if I take it away, you notice the highlight right around my eyes is really, really bright. That can be a a bit distracting in your images in your images but it's also not as flattering to your model next thing about your light is light placement i have a model here on the set today boy this is going to be fun but we're going to get into that in a minute but light placement is is really key depending on how you set your light up is how it's going to affect your subject Again, let's use my phone light. I'm going to put this light just right up under my chin like this. And that gives me a certain look. A lot of times it's not necessarily a good look. Think of your childhood when you get the flashlight and you want to go out night, go out at night and camping and you want to have a scary story time. Everybody grabs that flashlight and they put it up just like this. There's a reason for that because it gives you an ominous look. Oh, thank you, Mr. Victor. Boy, y'all are so good in this studio. Or on the flip side, if I put it down this way, well, not down, up, where it's facing down just like the sun at high noon, it's still not flattering because you look at these additional shadows on my face. 
if you do this to a model on a, on a photography set, they're probably going to punch you because it's not flattering to them. You get all of these additional shadows under their eyes. It gives them bags under their eyes, and it's going to be a lot more work for you in post-processing. Again, figure out where, it is, where the best space is to mount your light. A lot of times I like to go more so just slightly off center and slightly above, but it depends on the mood. Um, I did some test shots in the past where I wanted to have my son just sort of look mean and menacing. So I made the light harsh and I put it up high and I put it really, really, really close to him. So it put a lot of shadows on his face to make it look like he was frowning and looking sort of angry. And that made post-processing a lot easier for me to pull off that look. But that's part of the discussion today. We're going to show you a couple of examples. I'm going to try to turn off this flashlight so I don't blind myself here on the set. But um, we're going to show you a couple of examples. But I want to go ahead and take this couple of minutes to thank this week's sponsor of Hands-On Photography. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by Masterclass. Masterclass lets you learn from the best with exclusive access to online classes taught by masters of their craft with over 70 different instructors across many categories. Learn the art of filmmaking from Jodie Foster and Spike Lee or the art of storytelling from Neil Gaiman. There's literally something for everyone. For a limited time, when you buy one annual masterclass all access pass for yourself, you'll get another one to gift for free. Go to masterclass.com slash hop to get started with this limited time offer, buy one all access pass and get one free to gift at masterclass.com slash hop. All right, so now this is where the fun is going to begin. I have my model, my man, Mr. Main Man Hank. <laughs> I'm going to show you my camera screen. Uh, so let's flip on over to that, Mr. Victor. Right now you see some settings there. None of that's gonna matter. All I'm gonna do is change how I position my light source. We're gonna take this light. And because we have magical hands like Mr. Burke, Mr. Burke is gonna take this light and he's gonna hold it right here. Okay. Just like that, no biggie. And you can step a little bit closer right there. Good. And we're gonna hit the shutter. Boom. So now, okay, so we see him on the screen here and you notice here on the right hand side, the light is pretty harsh on his cheek. So now Mr. Burke, let's walk a little bit closer towards the, towards straight on to him like that. Yep. Hold that there. Perfect. We're going to hit another shot here. Boom. And then we look at the laptop. No, you're fine. Now see, now notice the positioning of the light, how it brought a little bit more to his face, give him a little bit more feel. And he doesn't have this menacing shadow on the other side as if he's getting ready for a horror movie. <laughs> so now, Mr. Burke, so now, Mr. Burke, let's really have some fun with it. Okay. Let's put that light right up under his chin. All right. He's, he's not going to like this at all. <laughs> so now oh, wow. we'll snap that shot. And let's take a look here. Look at that. That's not pretty. <laughs> That's not pretty. What are you doing to me, Ed? Now, take that same light, put it right above his head. Okay, so again, we're getting more shadows if you watch in the preview. So if I hit snap here, That's looking a little bit better, but I'm gonna give you all a free tip here. We're gonna keep that light right there. All right, so now we're gonna take that same light source and keep it above his head, but Mr. Hank, I'm gonna give you this, this little sheet of paper right now. So just hold this sheet of paper right up under your chin while we hold that light above your head. And then we're gonna click the shutter. And voila, that same menacing light above his head is not so menacing because now that little sheet of paper that I asked him to hold up under his chin is reflecting more light back up into his face, giving him a little bit more balance on the lighting. So that's just a couple little quick tips that you can have and, and play around with 
whether it's a model such as Mr. Hank and Mr. Burke, or you can take a bobblehead or just any little animate object in your house, grab yourself a light source, play around with it, move it around, up, down, left, right. Even if you put it behind the subject, that'll give you a different effect. Usually you'll get a nice silhouette effect with that. Uh, but also take into account diffusing the light. This is another light diffuser that you can put on the top of a um, pop-up uh, pop flash as well as a speed light flash. So if you don't have a, a speed light and your camera actually has a pop-up flash, it'll sit right inside this, this little diffuser and it'll soften the light on the pop-up flash. First and foremost, if you're using a pop-up flash, please go get one of these because the pop-up flashlight is not very flattering at all. But putting this on there will definitely, definitely help it. For the price, those are great investments. Right, and this thing, I believe you can spend maybe 10 bucks for this and it's made of much of nothing. You can fold it up, pack it in a bag, no worries. You're not going to destroy this thing. It's going to take a lot of effort to destroy it. So for 10 bucks, this is a really, really, really good investment. I am so sorry about all of the crazy technical madness, but we got it to work anyway, because, you know, when you're a photographer, sometimes you're going to have to uh, perform under pressure because some things are not going to work. It just happens. You just make do like what we did today. All right, folks, we're going to get on up out of here and get ready to do some more stuff here at twit.tv. I really do appreciate you all hopping in and joining us each and every week and being so generous with me and my fumbles and stumbles, but it, it really does mean a lot. Catch us each week here at 2 p.m.-ish Pacific time on Thursdays, and be sure to check your podcatcher and hit the subscribe button and share it on that with other folks. That is twit.tv slash hop if you're trying to find all of the podcatcher options, whether it's Stitcher or po uh, Pocket Cast or Anchor. It's all over the network, folks. Also, be sure to sign up for our Twit community, our online forums. That's twit.community in your browser. Hop in there and just check out all the things that we talk about for each and every show here on the network, the guests, uh, that pop in. Our hosts are on there each week. And we're not just talking about the shows. Sometimes we're having funny conversations about oh, times with the families during the holidays when everybody really just wants a quiet day off. <laughs> we have fun. All right, folks. Thank you again for hopping in. I'll catch you next week. Be sure to get out there and create and dominate. Take care.